cars float like boats on streets. Airport civic offices underwater. Posh Chennai localities inundated. Cyclone Migjom approaching. Return of 2015 flood nightmare. Top focus on Five Live. It's the city I still call home. Chennai is underwater once again in a flashback of the nightmare floods of 2015. How bad is it? What do you need to know if you're in the city or outside it? I'm going to tell you all and show you some very, very unsettling pictures from the great city of Chennai. I'm Shiv. This is Five Live. The headlines first. After the BJP sweep in three Hindi heartland states, suspense grows over Khan Barega. Mukhya Mantri, Rajasthan BJP leaders meet Amit Shah in Delhi. Vasundra Rajay gathers 20 MLAs in Jaipur. Suspense reaches fever pitch over who the new three CMs will be. A day after Congress drubbing in the three assembly elections in the North, India bloc allies blame Congress for the poor showing. Mamta Banerjee to skip Team India meet on December the 6th. Standing ovation for Prime Minister Modi in Parliament after the 3-1 sweep by the BJP in the Hindi heartland. Modi sends out a big message to the opposition, says don't vent frustration over loss inside Parliament. Ask opposition leaders to learn from the defeat. पिछले नौ साल से चलाई गई नकारात्मकता की प्रवृत्ति को छोड़ करके इस सत्र में अगर सकारात्मकता के साथ आगे बढ़ेंगे तो देश उनके तरफ देखने का दृष्टिकोण बदलेगा it's the rise of a new political star in Mizoram. Zoram People's Movement sweeps the Northeast state polls. Zoram Thanga resigns as Chief Minister. Laldu Homa, former IPS officer, set to be the next CM of Mizoram. Tragic news from Telangana. Two Indian Air Force pilots killed in trainer aircraft crash. The Pilatus trainer crashes very close to the Air Force Academy during a routine training flight. It was an instructor and a young cadet. For 24 hours now, the images coming out from the city of Chennai are horrifying to say the least. Not just horrifying because large parts of the city are completely underwater, as you can see in these pictures, because they also hark back to one of Chennai's most disturbing times, the 2015 floods. Many of the images you see now from this southern metropolis are very familiar because people have experienced this nightmare once before to levels of this kind. Residential areas completely inundated, a very disturbing image of cars simply floating like boats, images of crocodiles on the road, images of people desperate to go about their daily life in waste deep water, and a city that has once again been brought to a standstill. Now the reason for rains and flooding in Chennai are multifarious. From sudden huge bouts of rain to the inbound Mikchong cyclone to the fact that Chennai is surrounded by man-made reservoirs that have not been dealt with, the fact that climate change and weather change does have an impact on this flooding, coupled with the fact that administrative changes do not appear to have been made in full measure to completely flood-proof this beautiful coastal city. Now, what we're seeing now is emergency control rooms, war rooms on the ground by the Stalin government to take care of the people and to ensure that no more than the two people who've already died lose their lives. But if you look at the pictures from 2015 and then pictures of 2023, it appears that not very much has changed. The same levels of water, the same kind of anxiety, 
the boats by state disaster response force, the police out in the streets trying to help people, and not very much has changed. Political parties may come and go in Tamil Nadu, but the flood proofing of Chennai and the eastern coast of India continues to be a challenge that has not been defeated just yet. The Tamil Nadu government after 2015, 3,331.19 kilometers of stormwater drains were built. This ensured the cleaning of waterways on a regular basis. The desilting of minor repairs of stormwater drains was conducted. This is after 2015. The clearing of silt, catch pits and shoot pipes of blockages. There was a bigger focus after the 2015 floods on non-structural works to improve the flow of water bodies because waterlogging is one of the biggest nightmares that Chennai sees year after year in rains. But it is this kind of crippling flooding that has brought it completely into uh, you know, uh, uh, into focus and made it uh, such a big national story. I want to go across to India today's uh, Shibi Mal KG, who is joining us live from the Mailapur area of Chennai, one of the worst affected. Uh, uh, Shibi, the rain doesn't appear to have stopped. You're live with me right now. I can see that, that it's still raining. Uh, what is the forecast? Is the worst over or is it yet to come, Shibi? Oh, well, Shiv, since morning we were told that uh, by evening the rain might subside and we will have a relief from rainfall, but it doesn't look like that because with evening it's only gaining more strength because uh, it does not stop raining. That's the biggest concern here since last evening, not even for a five, for a five minute, you know, not even for five minutes it has stopped raining. It's continuously raining since last evening. and. One of the major difficulties that the people here are facing is the lack of communication that they were saying because there's no electricity since the last 18 hours in most of the regions that people are not able to understand in which certain areas are the water levels the highest. So they're saying that since there's no power cut, we are not able to understand. A lot of them have been stuck since morning. We met a lot of them on the way uh, who said that we got stuck without knowing that these regions are waterlogged like to this level. So uh, that's one of the major concerns here. The IMD is saying that we will continue to receive rainfall at least till t tomorrow. So uh, it looks like there's no major relief as of now. But yes, it's the situation here looks like it's very alarming considering that the roads that's waterlogged completely and the police have in fact put barricades and restricted entry to certain regions. So uh, the, what the corporation, the Greater Chennai Corporation officials are saying is that they will, they can do something only if there's a relief from rainfall. They can pump out water. Yesterday when it rained, we saw we went to certain areas where we saw the corporation officials trying to pump out water from the road. But that's not possible today unless and until there's a light relief from rainfall at least. So it looks like it's going to rain continuously and People having probably the most toughest time, uh, you know, especially with the gusty winds also. The winds adding on to the worry, uh, adding on to the worry and it's not stopped raining and that's Sh Shibi, that your, 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 your uh, umbrella, your umbrella is all bent challenges. out of shape because of the speed of the wind. I'm going to let you go for the moment so you can get to safety and out of the water. Uh, and I'll come right back to you. I have Shilpa waiting for me as well. Shibi, we'll come back to you. Please stay safe. Just giving you some live pictures of where Cyclone Mikchong currently is. It's off the Chennai coast. It's a pretty powerful storm, but it is moving north. That's the reason why our reporting team tells us that the rains might actually subside in Chennai today because the cyclone is moving towards the coast of Andhra Pradesh. So by tomorrow, later tonight, it will have shifted north towards Andhra Pradesh, providing some relief to Chennai and then unleashing most of its wrath on the coast of Andhra Pradesh, where we do know that preparations are already there in full swing. Jagan Mohan Reddy, the uh, Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, has also announced preparations there in that state. I want to, meanwhile, bring in uh, Shilpa Nair. She's at the Chennai Central Railway Station as well. She's been reporting from across the most affected parts of Chennai. Uh, Shilpa, uh, you know, you, you took us through some of the most unsettling pictures in Chennai. You were there reporting in 2015, I remember as well, Shilpa. Uh, is, uh, you know, uh, is it as bad as it was in 2015 or have things actually improved? It's hard to tell from here, but you've experienced both, Shilpa. Uh, well, uh, Shiv, as far as uh, Chennai is concerned, the situation is quite concerning. Yes, uh, we've seen devastating floods in the past. 
and the images that we see today, the visuals that we see today on the roads, on the streets of Chennai, uh, reminds us of that tragedy. But uh, uh, because the rainfall in both these cases are pretty high, you know, that is the reason why Chennai is flooding because no city is equipped to handle this amount of rain. It, it started raining last evening uh, and since then there has not, uh, you know, been a short break of sorts uh, as far as the rainfall is concerned and that is the reason why the entire city is inundated. And I'm just going to uh, show you the visuals from the Chennai Central Railway Station Shiv and you know how important this uh, railway station is as far as Chennai is concerned, as far as Southern Railway is concerned. A lot of trains that go that goes to uh, the northern parts of India, they uh, have a stop here or they start from Chennai. Uh, but because of the cyclone alert, a lot of trains, uh, more than 100 trains uh, services have been cancelled by the Chennai, uh, by the Southern Railway. Uh, the, uh, the service patterns have been completely changed because of uh, the cyclone alert. Many of them, uh, you know, are stranded. Several of these passengers had taken uh, tickets to travel, but all of their tickets got uh, cancelled. Bhai, aap uh, bataiye, aap kaha jane wale the? Dana bhai. Aur aapka train kab tha? Mera train 2:45 minute. Aur aapko kuch message aaya? Ticket cancelled ho gaya? Message aaya, toh cancel ho gaya toh. कुछ रिफंड मिलेगा आपको कुछ नहीं बोला अभी तक कुछ नहीं मिला है तो आप कहाँ रहेंगे आज आपको कुछ जगह कहाँ पर रहेंगे यहीं रहेंगे आप स्टेशन पे ही रहेंगे और आप इसके साथ में ही हैं अच्छा आप दोनों पार्टनर जा रहे थे हाँ मैं सर आप मैं सर निंगे निंगे एंगेल दो रहेंगे सर नागेदिलंदो � in the time limit? Now, we have come to Tamil Nadu. We have to wait for the time. Okay. So, where are you from? Tamil, Tamil. Okay, where are you from? Salem. Salem. Okay, train cancelled? Yes, train cancelled. So, this is what they are saying. You know, all of these are all people who are travelling to different parts of the country. Some of them, of course, travelling within Tamil Nadu as well. All of their trains have been cancelled. And I'm just going to request my video journalist, Daniel, to show you inside the Chennai Central Railway Station to see, to show you the kind of situation because there are so many stranded passengers, all of them waiting because they have no idea when the next train will be. Uh, and Southern Railway too, you know, uh, until the situation improves, they cannot run train services because at several locations, water has entered uh, the railway tracks and for that reason, uh, they are not able to operate train services. So that is the reason why many of them, they do not have uh, option of going to any hotel or, uh, you know, uh, having uh, uh, any option of any accommodation. That is the reason why many of them are still staying at the Chennai Central Railway Station. Even uh, when it comes to the flight operations, the Chennai runway, uh, the uh, uh, the operations have been suspended till 11 p.m. this uh, night and uh, uh, of course they will be assessing the situation once again later in the evening uh, to see whether they can reopen uh, the services. Uh, so several flights diverted, several flights cancelled uh, and as far as people of Chennai are concerned, though they are all indoors, the, okay. the fact of the matter is water, uh, rainwater has entered their homes and that of course is you know causing a huge inconvenience to the people uh, the message that Tamil Nadu and, and, and we've actually seen the you know we've seen the images the, uh, from Chennai. inside people's homes inside people's colonies inside people's vehicles people have been you know posting pictures on social media very very familiar uh, sort of, uh, you know, mood to what we saw in 2015 as well. Look at the pictures that we're showing. Shilpa, I'm coming back to you in just a moment. Look at these pictures from inside people's homes from earlier today. Inside, uh, you know, a government, uh, you know, a government area, inside a hospital, inside people's colonies. This is one of India's metropolitan cities. Now, Chennai is very familiar to me, viewer, because that's where I was born, that's where I grew up. I spent the first 18 years of my life in the city. But to see it in this manner, there's always been heavy rain in Chennai, it's a coastal city. But to see the city crippled in this manner with each passing year is very, very distressing. It p perhaps shows that with dispensation after dispensation, not enough has been done to flood-proof the city, and it is perhaps uh, you know, a reality that you can't even, given everything that happens in Chennai, flood-proof it completely. I wanted to show you another viral video that our team, uh, which Shilpa and her team sent us earlier today, uh, to show you just how crazy things are in this urban metropolis. A video of a crocodile, a video of a crocodile crawling on one of Chennai's waterlogged roads near the 
Uh, Perungalathur area has gone viral on social media. I'm not surprised that it has completely gone viral. Uh, the forest department says that this isn't something to uh, be surprised by. There are many mugger crocodiles, uh, you know, who, who, who are resident in some of the reservoirs uh, uh, around and in Chennai. And when there is a great deal of water logging, when the water level rises, these poor reptiles sometimes leave those reservoirs and are looking for safer areas. They get disturbed by bright lights as well and they have to find safety and sometimes they are even seen crossing roads like they have in this particular video. Shilpa, this video of a crocodile, uh, you know, most people seeing it are going to sort of reel in fright. Uh, but I remember something of this kind happening in 2015 as well. Uh, it's easy to forget that Chennai is surrounded by uh, reservoirs. There is wildlife there. Uh, you know, the fact that these beasts, uh, you know, this is their natural habitat. Some of these reservoirs is something that is lost on most of us, isn't it? And it is us who've gone into their habitat. Yeah. Well, that's it, Shiv. In fact, uh, you know, that is what officials and experts also claim, that every time water levels increase in water bodies, uh, these mugger crocodiles tend to come out, and that is precisely what happened in uh, Perungulatur area, which is in the outskirts of Chennai as well. Uh, you can see from that visual how a food delivery person is trying to, you know, ride on that road, and that is when this crocodile comes out of the water body, which is uh, located nearby. And seeing the light and seeing the commotion, uh, the crocodile, the mugger crocodile, of course, goes back into the water body now. Uh, the residents, local residents, of course, are very, very concerned about this development. In fact, they've been asking uh, the forest department officials to take note of the situation and do something so that uh, these uh, uh, crocodiles do not come into residential areas and cause any kind of danger to the public. Uh, uh, re reacting to, these, uh, to this uh, particular viral video, Tamil Nadu Forest Secretary uh, Supriya Sahu, of course, said that uh, there are, of course, uh, many mugger crocodiles in, in and around Chennai, in the water bodies in and around Chennai. And uh, it is usual. Uh, so uh, the, the one advice that she has, of course, put forward is that uh, people should not provoke uh, these crocodiles because it would go back uh, to the water bodies on their own if not if they are not provoked. But apart from that, she also said that the forest department is keeping a very close watch uh, to ensure that there is no untoward incident. So these images, of course, have. Uh, created a sense of fear and panic amongst the minds, uh, amongst the people of Chennai, uh, because this is something that they've seen in the past, the kind of deluge, the kind of flooding, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, visuals that we're showing, uh, putting out on screen, uh, rescue operations being carried out at multiple locations, relief centers being opened, uh, food uh, food being distributed uh, to those uh, who are in need. Uh, these are all pictures that have played out in the past as well. Uh, and that is the reason why at this moment, uh, you know, everyone's just hoping and praying that the rain subsides. Uh, even now, as we're speaking, the rain is pounding. It is, uh, you know, the, the cyclone is just dumping huge quantity of rainfall uh, in and around Chennai, not just Chennai, Tamil Nadu, uh, Tiruvallur, Kanchipuram and Chengalpet districts as well. So because of that, the Tamil Nadu government has announced a public holiday for these four districts tomorrow. And apart from that, the Tamil Nadu uh, Disaster Management Authority has uh, you know, requested uh, the private establishments and uh, okay. offices to allow their employees to work from home or if at all they want to work, only allow essential staff uh, to come to office because it's a truly a very uh, unsafe time for people to venture out of their homes and come into the streets uh, because you you know the kind of accidents that takes place during rain, during floods. Uh, so that is the reason why at this point in time the government wants to ensure that most people remain indoors. And two and people, all they require let's not forget uh, uh, Shilpa that to, two people again. have already died uh, you know, for, for, for various reasons, there could be risk to many more. You know, when floods like this happen, we usually hear about people uh, being injured or dying because of electrocution as well, or walls collapsing and that kind of thing. So two people have died, which is already too, too many uh, for a place like Chennai. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on this. Shilpa, I'm going to let you go for the moment. Please stay safe, you and Shibi. Uh, brave work you're doing, keeping the story completely on top which we will continue to keep our focus on. For the moment, I'm shifting focus to Sindhu Durg in coastal Maharashtra, where Prime Minister Narendra Modi... Prime Minister Chara Modi addressing the Indian Navy on Navy Day. Chhatrapati Veer Shivaji Maharaj ka Pratap, Rajkot Fort par, unki vishal pratima ka anavaran, aur aap kiye, हुंकार हर भारतवासी को 
जोश से भर रही है आपके लिए ही कहा गया है चलो चलो नई मिसाल हो बड़ो नया कमाल हो झुको नहीं रुको नहीं बढ़े चलो बड़े चलो मैं नौसेना परिवार के सभी सदस्यों को नेवी डे पर विशेष रूप से बधाई देता हूं आज के दिन हम उन सुरवीरों को भी प्रणाम करते हैं जिन्होंने मातृभूमि के लिए अपना सर्वोच्च बलिदान दिया है साथियों आज सिंधुदुर्ग की इस वीर भूमि से देशवासियों को नौसेना दिवस की बधाई देना वाकई अपने आप में बहुत बड़े गौरव की घटना है सिंधु दुर्ग के ऐतिहासिक किले को देखकर हर भारतीय गर्व से भर जाता है छत्रपति वीर शिवाजी महाराज जानते थे कि किसी भी देश के लिए समुद्री सामर्थ्य कितना जरूरी होता है उनका उद्घोष था जलमेव यश बलमेव तश्च यानी जो समुद्र पर नियंत्रण रखता है वह सर्वशक्तिमान है उन्होंने एक शक्तिशाली नौसेना बनाई कानोजी आंग्रे हो मायजी नाइक भाटकर हो हीरोजी इंदालकर हो ऐसे अनेक योद्धा आज भी हमारे लिए बहुत बड़ी प्रेरणा है मैं आज नौसेना दिवस पर देश के ऐसे पराक्रमी योद्धाओं को भी नमन करता हूं साथियों छत्रपति वीर शिवाजी महाराज से प्रेरणा लेते हुए आज भारत गुलामी की मानसिकता को पीछे छोड़कर आगे बढ़ रहा है मुझे खुशी है कि हमारे नेवल ऑफिसर्स जो अपलेट्स पहनते हैं अब उसमें छत्रपति वीर शिवाजी महाराज की विरासत की झलक भी देखने को मिलने वाली है नए एपोलेट भी अब उनकी नौसेना के प्रतीक चिन्ह की तरह ही होंगे ये मेरा सौभाग्य है कि नौसेना के ध्वज को मुझे पिछले वर्ष छत्रपति शिवाजी महाराज की विरासत से जोड़ने का अवसर मिला था अब एपोलेट्स में भी छत्रपति वीर शिवाजी महाराज का प्रतिबिंब हम सबको नजर आएगा अपनी विरासत पर गर्व की भावना के साथ मुझे एक और घोषणा करते हुए आज गौरव हो रहा है भारतीय नौसेना अब अपने रैंक्स का नामकरण भारतीय परंपराओं के अनुरूप करने जा रही है हम सशस्त्र बलों में अपनी नारी शक्ति की संख्या बढ़ाने पर भी जोर दे रहे हैं मैं नौसेना को बधाई दूंगा कि आपने नेवल शिप में देश की पहली महिला कमांडिंग अफसर की तैनाती की है साथियों आज का भारत अपने लिए बड़े लक्ष्य तय कर रहा है और उसे पाने के लिए अपनी पूरी शक्ति लगा रहा है भारत के पास इन लक्ष्यों को पूरा करने के लिए एक बड़ी ताकत है 
ये ताकत 140 करोड़ भारतीयों के विश्वास की है ये ताकत दुनिया के सबसे बड़े लोकतंत्र की मजबूती की है कल आपने देश के चार राज्यों में इसी ताकत की झलक देखी देश ने देखा जब लोगों के संकल्प जुड़ते हैं जब लोगों की भावनाएं जुड़ती हैं जब लोगों की आकांक्षाएं जुड़ती है तो कितने सकारात्मक परिणाम सामने आते हैं अलग अलग राज्यों की प्राथमिकताएं अलग है उनकी आवश्यकताएं अलग है लेकिन सभी राज्यों के लोग राष्ट्र प्रथम की भावना से ओतप्रोत है देश है तो हम है देश आगे बढ़ेगा तो हम आगे बढ़ेंगे यही भावना आज हर नागरिक के मन में है आज देश इतिहास से प्रेरणा लेकर उज्जवल भविष्य के रोडमैप तैयार करने में जुट गया है लोगों ने नकारात्मकता की राजनीति को हराकर हर क्षेत्र में आगे निकलने का प्रण किया है यही प्रण हमें विकसित भारत की ओर ले जाएगा यही प्राण देश का वो गौरव लौटाएगा जिसका ये देश हमेशा से हकदार है साथियों भारत का इतिहास सिर्फ एक हजार साल की गुलामी का इतिहास नहीं है सिर्फ हार और निराशा का इतिहास नहीं है भारत का इतिहास विजय का इतिहास है भारत का इतिहास शौर्य का इतिहास है भारत का इतिहास ज्ञान और विज्ञान का इतिहास है भारत का इतिहास कला और सृजन कौशल का इतिहास है भारत का इतिहास हमारे सामुद्रिक सामर्थ्य का इतिहास है सैकड़ों वर्ष पहले जब ऐसी टेक्नोलॉजी नहीं थी जब ऐसे संसाधन नहीं थे तब उस जमाने में समंदर को चीर कर हमने सिंधु दुर्ग जैसे कितने ही किले बनवाए भारत का सामुद्रिक सामर्थ्य हजारों साल पुराना है गुजरात के लोथल में मिला सिंधु घाटी सभ्यता का पोर्ट आज हमारी बहुत बड़ी विरासत है एक समय में सूरत के बंदरगाह पर 80 से ज्यादा देशों के जहाज लंगर डालकर रहा करते थे चोल साम्राज्य ने भारत के इसी सामर्थ्य के बलबूते दक्षिण पूर्व एशिया के कितने ही देशों तक अपना व्यापार फैलाया और इसलिए जब विदेशी ताकतों ने भारत पर हमला किया तो सबसे पहले हमारी इस शक्ति को निशाना बनाया गया जो भारत नाव और जहाज बनाने के मशहूर था उसकी ये कला ये कौशल सब कुछ ठप कर दर गया गया और अब और जब हमने समंदर पर अपना नियंत्रण खोया हमने अपनी सामरिक आर्थिक ताकत भी खो दी इसलिए आज जब भारत विकसित होने के लक्ष्य पर चल रहा है तो हमें अपने इस खोए हुए गौरव को फिर से पा करके ही रहना है इसलिए ही आज हमारी सरकार भी इससे जुड़े हर क्षेत्र पर फोकस करते हुए काम कर रही है आज भारत ब्लू इकोनॉमी को अभूतपूर्व प्रोत्साहन दे रहा है आज भारत सागर माला के तहत पोर्ट लेड डेवलपमेंट में जुटा है आज भारत मेरीटाइम विजन के तहत अपने सागरों के पूरे सामर्थ्य का इस्तेमाल करने की ओर 
तेज गति से बढ़ रहा है मर्चेंट शिपिंग को बढ़ावा देने के लिए भी सरकार ने नए नियम बनाए हैं सरकार के प्रयासों से बीते नौ वर्षों में भारत में सी फेरर्स की संख्या में 140 प्रतिशत से ज्यादा बढ़ी बढ़ोतरी हुई है मेरे साथियों ये भारत के इतिहास का वो कालखंड है जो सिर्फ पांच दस साल का नहीं बल्कि आने वाली सदियों का भविष्य लिखने वाला है दस वर्ष से भी कम के कालखंड में भारत दुनिया में दसवें नंबर की आर्थिक ताकत से बढ़कर पांचवें नंबर पर पहुंच गया है और अब बहुत तेजी से तीसरे नंबर के आर्थिक महाशक्ति बनने की तरफ आज भारत अग्रसर है आज देश विश्वास और आत्मविश्वास से भरा हुआ है आज दुनिया को भारत में विश्व मित्र का उदय होता दिख रहा है आज स्पेस हो या फिर समंदर हर जगह दुनिया को भारत का सामर्थ्य दिख रहा है आज पूरी दुनिया भारत मिडल ईस्ट यूरोप इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर की चर्चा कर रही है जिस स्पाइस रूट को अतीत में हमने खो दिया था वो अब फिर से भारत की समृद्धि का सशक्त आधार बनने जा रहा है आज मेड इन इंडिया की चर्चा पूरी दुनिया में हो रही है तेजस विमान हो या किसान ड्रोन यूपीआई सिस्टम हो या फिर चंद्रयान तीन हर जगह हर सेक्टर में मेड इन इंडिया की धूम है आज हमारी सेनाओं की अधिकतर जरूरतें मेड इन इंडिया अस्त्र शस्त्र से ही पूरी की जा रही है देश में पहली बार ट्रांसपोर्ट एयरक्राफ्ट का निर्माण शुरू हो रहा है पिछले साल ही मैंने कोची में स्वदेशी एयरक्राफ्ट कैरियर आईएनएस विक्रांत को नौसेना में कमीशन किया था आईएनएस विक्रांत मेक इन इंडिया आत्मनिर्भर भारत का एक सशक्त उदाहरण है आज भारत दुनिया के कुछ गिने चुने देशों में है जिसके पास ऐसा सामर्थ्य है साथियों बीते वर्षों में हमने पहले की सरकारों की एक और पुरानी सोच को बदला है पहले की सरकारें हमारे सीमावर्ती और समुद्र किनारे बसे गांवों को इलाकों को अंतिम गांव मानती थी हमारे रक्षा मंत्री जी ने अभी उसका उल्लेख भी किया इस सोच के कारण हमारे तटीय क्षेत्र भी विकास से वंचित रहे यहां मूल सुविधाओं का अभाव रहा आज समंदर किनारे बसे हर परिवार के जीवन को बेहतर बनाना केंद्र सरकार की प्राथमिकता है यह हमारी सरकार है जितने 2019 में पहली बार फिशरीज सेक्टर के लिए अलग मंत्रालय बनाया हमने फिशरीज सेक्टर में लगभग चालीस हजार करोड़ का निवेश किया है इस वजह से 2014 के बाद से भारत में मछली उत्पादन 80 प्रतिशत से ज्यादा बढ़ा है भारत से मछली का एक्सपोर्ट भी 110 प्रतिशत से ज्यादा बढ़ा है अपने मछुआरों की मदद करने के लिए सरकार हर संभव कोशिश कर रही है हमारी सरकार ने मछुआरों के लिए बीमा कवर 2 लाख से बढ़ाकर 5 लाख किया है देश में पहली बार मछुआरों को किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड का भी लाभ मिला है सरकार फिशरी सेक्टर में वैल्यू चेन डेवलपमेंट पर भी काफी जोर दे रही है आज सागरमाला योजना से पूरे समुद्र किनारे में आधुनिक कनेक्टिविटी पर बल दिया जा रहा है इस पर लाखों करोड़ रुपए खर्च किए जा रहे हैं ताकि समुद्री किनारों में 
नए उद्योग लगे नए बिजनेस आए मछली हो दूसरा सी फूड हो इसकी पूरी दुनिया में बहुत अधिक डिमांड है इसलिए हम सी फूड प्रोसेसिंग से जुड़ी इंडस्ट्री पर बल दे रहे हैं ताकि मछुआरों की आय बढ़ाई जाए You can catch more of that speech online on all of our platforms. Meanwhile, a very quick break here on Five Live. On the other side, the big suspense for Prime Minister Modi and the rest of the BJP over who the next three chief ministers of the world's largest party are going to be in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and Chhattisgarh. Who will become Prime Minister? We'll tell you whatever we know next. watching India today powered by Finest be sustainable change a BNP group company the true viewership king stands tall absolute domination on results day viewership super smash the live concurrent data clearly shows India today's lead is almost thrice you could add up times now in Republic Rajdeep I think you can add all of them and they still won't come no, to no, India can today. I, since you have advertised this program as double engine BJP ka double engine clear hai. Decimates the competition. Viewers reward India's number one channel. No fakery, no fixing, only facts. India's true number one channel. quality today in delhi 313 in mumbai 113 in kolkata 206 in bangalore 53 in chennai 17 in hyderabad 59 watching India today powered by Finest be sustainable change a BNP group company इस संसद भवन के नए परिसर का उद्घाटन हुआ तब तो एक छोटा सा सत्र था ऐतिहासिक निर्णय हुआ था लेकिन इस बार लंबे समय तक इस सदन में कार्य करने का अवसर मिलेगा नया सदन है छोटी मोटी अभी भी शायद व्यवस्थाओं में कुछ कमियां महसूस हो सकती हैं जब लगातार काम चलेगा संसदों और विजिटर्स को भी मीडिया के लोगों को भी ध्यान में आएगा कि इसको जरा अगर ठीक कर लिया जाए तो अच्छा होगा और मुझे विश्वास है कि आदरणीय उपराष्ट्रपति जी और आदरणीय स्पीकर महोदय के नेतृत्व में उन चीजों की तरफ पूरी तरह निगरानी है और आपसे भी मैं कहूंगा कोई चीज ऐसी छोटी मोटी आपके ध्यान में आए तो जरूर आप ध्यान आकर्षित करना क्योंकि ये चीजें जब बनती हैं तो आवश्यकता के अनुसार बदलाव की भी जरूरत होती है
को प्रेजेंटेड बाय आपका जॉय भारत का जॉय जॉय ई बाई को प्रेजेंटेड बाय नेक्सा क्रिएट इंस्पायर को पावर्ड बाय पारुल यूनिवर्सिटी वडोदरा गुजरात को पावर्ड बाय आरसल और मित्तल ने पॉन्स स्टील इंडिया बनाऊंगा मैं बनेगा भारत The BJP has swept the states of Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and Chhattisgarh. View what the celebrations are over, and now the million or the billion dollar question is: Who will become CM? Who will become Mukhya Mantri? There is only one CM ka kursi in each of these three states, but there are at least theoretically at this point of time many potential contenders. Will it be the old guard, those who've either been chief minister before our chief minister currently or have served at some distant point in the past or will the bjp effect a generational change signaling before 2024 that it is committed to change as the only constant over the next few minutes i'm going to decode for you kon banega mukhyamantri in these three states remember shivraj chauhan is the incumbent chief minister of madhya pradesh dr raman singh was the chief minister who was toppled in chatisgarh and vasundhara rajay was ousted by gelot these are the three people who stand to lose if a new chief minister is instituted by the bjp first let's look at madhya pradesh the biggest state that the bjp has won a big title defense by incumbent chief minister shivraj singh chauhan undoubtedly the man of this particular match the shivraj mania worked for the bharatiya janata party in madhya pradesh shivraj chauhan's welfare schemes his voters his especially the ladli bena yojana that we've been telling you about put money in the pockets of poor women all of these things are being cited as the vote winner but shivraj singh chauhan when asked repeatedly since this victory about who is responsible has said it is narendra modi the prime minister now shivraj singh chauhan if he is made the chief minister once again would be returning for a record fifth term but apart from shivraj singh chauhan there are others remember the prime minister the senior leadership of the bjp hasn't taken shivraj singh chauhan aka mama ji's name even once since this big victory setting tongues wagging over kon banega mukhyamantri in madhya pradesh the old guard is shivraj singh chauhan strongest senior most face OBC enjoys public support he is the guy under whose leadership this election was won in the state of Madhya Pradesh but if there is a generational change beyond Shivraj Singh Chauhan Narendra Singh Tomar well not much of a generational change but someone different he's a minister in the central government has been a state president twice before but there was a viral video of his son recently that did the rounds that has dented his position Moreover there is Prahlad Patel who is a member of parliament he is a member of the OBC community compatible with top leaders and is member of the OBC community which puts him in pretty good stead Kailash Vijayvargiya is the high profile MLA enjoys public support and the trust of the leadership never forget that there is jyotiraditya sindhya union minister in the central government who led that famous coup against the congress party his former organization in 2020 delivering madhya pradesh in many ways to the bjp then there is vd sharma who is state president he is a first time mp has youth on his side has organizational hold of the bjp in madhya pradesh so all of these different names are doing the rounds could it be mama ji or will there be a generational change emendra sharma uh, is uh, india today's uh, bureau chief in bhopal he's been tracking all of the big stories breaking all the news as far as this uh, this election was concerned uh, emendra uh, you know when it comes to the anointment of a chief minister the the political wisdom under the bjp usually suggests that a maximum of one or two people even know who is going to get that position who is going to get that call anything that you're picking up over whether it will be shivraj or a generational shift this time 
Well, even though Shivra Singh Chauhan was not made the chief ministerial face by the Bharti Janata Party in the run-up to these elections, he still remains the front runner because of the fact that the Bharti Janata Party rode back to power on the back of the Ladli Behna Yojana, as you rightly mentioned, and also because of his experience, he is going to be the fifth time chief minister. But if the Bharti Janata Party decides to go for a change, then it is suffering from the problem of plenty, as you said. There is Narendra Tomar, there is Kalash Vijay Vargi, there is Pralad Patel, there is V D Sharma, and of course there could be this dark horse called Jyotir Sindhya. Mm. But uh, if we go by this caste uh, uh, requirement, because everyone is talking about O B C these days, so Pralad Patel fits in, and also there is Rakesh Singh, the uh, former B J P president who was a member of parliament and he has contested from uh, Jabalpur. People yes. were believing that he would lose, but then he defeated Tarun Gelo, uh, Banot, the former finance minister, with a huge bar. So he's also there, but as you said, only two people in the BJP know who is going to be the next chief minister of Madhya Pradesh, and also Kalash Vijayawardhi has thrown the uh, game open in a sense by saying in Indore yesterday that uh, Ladli Behla Yojana is not the reason that the BJP has come back to power in Madhya Pradesh. Was there a Ladli Behla Yojana in uh, Rajasthan, or was there a Ladli Behla Yojana in uh, Chhattisgarh? So these are the questions that uh, uh, Kalash Vijayawardhi is asking, and also. So I would like to remind and tell you that uh, when Kalash Vijayawardhi was appointed the National General Secretary, he came on record that evening saying that the BJP leadership wanted to give him something more, but because of certain reasons, they could not give it to him. So probably he, this is the time that he wants to uh, take that big thing that was to be delivered to him. But all these are speculations. What would happen when this would happen? The BJP yeah. top leadership would decide, and this would be stamped by the BJP Parliamentary Board. Himendra, thanks very much for that. The parliamentary board, uh, Prime Minister Modi, Amit Shah, they're the ones who will finally take this decision. Uh, we'll have to see where things stand. Nobody knows for sure who it's actually going to be. Could it be someone on this list? Could it be someone who nobody is even thinking of right now, like it has happened in the past, in the case of uh, 2017 in Uttar Pradesh? We don't know yet, but you will hear about it first here on India Today. That's Madhya Pradesh. Now let's take you to the state of Rajasthan. The Congress was hoping uh, to to you know, change Rajasthan's revolving door policy as far as governments voted out consecutively is concerned. Gelot got voted out as expected. The BJP on top with 115 seats. The Congress reduced to just 69 and the others with 15. Now, Gelot was the all-powerful chief minister. He spent a large part of his tenure over the last five years in a high-profile dispute and a feud with his younger colleague, Sachin Pilot. Vasundhara Raje was the high-profile queen of BJP politics in Rajasthan, who was ousted by Gelot. Now as well, Vasundhara is playing some power games. She's just met with 20 BJP MLAs. The BJP's victory this time suggests that Vasundhara Raje doesn't have the kind of leverage, perhaps, that she may have had if the BJP's numbers were below 100. But with 115 seats, the BJP holds all the cards. There are some moves and shakes happening behind the scenes. But if it were not Vasundhara Raje, for any reason, if Vasundhara Raje is not made the chief minister, and it is increasing looking like that, according to our political team, Kaun Banega chief minister in Rajasthan. The old guard is Vasundhara Raje. Most popular face in the state wasn't projected as Chief Minister's face very conspicuously. But if there is a generational change, could it be Arjun Ram Meghwal, Member of Parliament, Dalit face, ex-administrative uh, services officer, considered a good administrator. He's the man you saw standing behind Narendra Modi today outside Parliament. You see him behind Prime Minister Modi quite often seated behind him in Parliament as well. That beautiful colourful Rajasthani turban as well is his calling card. Diya Kumari, Royalty, Member of Parliament, Rajput and female face, high profile during this election campaign. Her fight was very, very well covered. She's also reportedly in the race. Gajendra Singh Shikhavat, Member of Parliament. He's the man who defeated Ashok Gehlot's son for the second time in 2019 uh, in, in, in Jodhpur. Then you've got C.P. Joshi. He's the state BJP president, a man who once lost an election by one vote but he's a two-time MP and he continues to be in the running after trying to be Chief Minister for a very, very long time. Then there's Om Birla, 
Lok Sabha speaker seen as taking everyone along. He's a Lok Sabha speaker. Could he be relieved to be chief minister? Then there is the other yogi, Baba Balaknath, also member of parliament, seen as a Hindutva face, represents the OBCs. Never forget there is Kirori Lal Meena as a stronghold among ST voters as well. So this is the list of people who may be in the reckoning. Once again, that obvious disclaimer is nobody really knows apart from maybe one or two people and you know who they are. I want to go across to Jai Kishan Sharma who's been fronting our amazing coverage from the state of Rajasthan. Jai Kishan, so many names. Vasundhara Rajay has just met 20 MLAs as well. There appear to be some power games going on. Uh, you know, what is it going to look like? I, I, I'm not asking you to guess a name because that's very difficult, but tell us what you're picking up. Shiv, it's the show of strength of Vasundra Rajay. We are standing outside 13 civil lines, which is Bangli of Vasundra Rajay. And the numbers of MLA's meeting, Vasundra Rajay is constantly increasing. My camera person, Ajay, is showing you the visuals from inside the house of Vasundra Rajay. So definitely the attention has diverted from eight civil lines to 13 civil lines. Eight civil lines is house of Ashok Gelot now. Everybody is guessing and questions are howling in whether who will be the next chief minister. So many contenders to claim the royal throne of Rajasthan. One, Dia Kumari, the top contender, Vasundra Raja with backing of more than 36 MLAs right now. She campaigned for 59 candidates in the Rajasthan Assembly elections and 36 uh, MLAs have won. So a strike rate of 73%. After Vasundra Raja, she is in the... You know, race for Chief Minister, top contender, followed by Dia Kumari, won by more than 70,000 votes from Vidyadhar Nagar constituency, a woman, and she also hails from the erstwhile royal family. Following these two women are Gajendra Singh Shekhawat, Union Minister, a very close friend of Amit Shah. Amit Shah has recited his names from multiple flows while campaigning that Gajendra Singh Shekhawat is my friend. Gajendra Singh, that another Union Minister, Arjun Meghwal, he is a Dalit face. He is again Union Law Minister, elevated, yeah. you know, he was elevated to the post of Parliamentary Affairs first, then given post of Law Minister. So, so many names in the fray to become Chief Minister, but as you said, nobody knows, everybody is speaking on the basis of the feedback taken from RSS, senior BJP leaders in Delhi and people close to Amit Shah and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, but for short, one of the names which is surprising and has not been heard is Anita Badel. She is five-time MLA from Ajmer and she is a Dalit lady and she has got a very clear okay. reputation. So her name is also in the top contendership. And closing, cutting down very shortly that yesterday, CP Joshi, the state BJP president and Arun Singh, the in charge of Rajasthan, has taken feedback from more than 80 to okay. 90 MLS through phone, through mobile phone. So it would be interesting that you will claim the royal throne of Rajasthan. It's a big list. Yeah. It's a big list in Rajasthan. You've added two names to the list that we already have, uh, Jai Kishan. So well done. The list has only expanded, makes it more interesting. This is a big khichdi that's cooking in Jaipur. And of course, Jai Kishan and team will be breaking that story first as to who's going to be the new Mukhya Mantri in Jaipur. Thanks very much, uh, Jai Kishan, for heading us that. Now let's tell you about the other state of Chhattisgarh. This is where the Congress was totally complacent. They thought they were going to win, but Khan Banega, Chief Minister in Chhattisgarh, is as crazy as the other two states we've told you about. Bhupesh Baghel's Congress party has lost. The BJP's 154. Congress reduced to 35. Well, the old guard of the BJP, the old guard of the BJP, the person who after two terms was defeated by the Congress party in 2018, was Dr. Raman Singh. Dr. Raman Singh, senior leader of the BJP. He was uh, on India Today. You saw him yesterday as well. He was chief minister for 15 years across three terms. But if there is a generational change this time, then the BJP could, could be considering Saroj Pandey, member of parliament. She's the BJP national vice president, aggressive, sharp local leader. Then you've got Arjun Sao, he's state president, he's an OBC, young, ensured the victory of 19 out of 35 OBC candidates in this election. Then you've got O.P. Chaudhary, also an OBC, ex-IAS officer, very young, said to be close to Dr. Raman Singh. Then you've got Renuka Singh, the only union minister from the state, is a tribal and also a female face, would 
if chosen, be the first uh, woman chief minister of the young state of Chhattisgarh. Vishnu Dev Sai is a well-known tribal leader and could also uh, be in consideration. So those are the elements that we have to share with you right now. Remember, when we break it to you, it will very likely be one of these names. We've got some breaking news coming in now. And we now know that the big swearing-in ceremony in Telangana for the next Congress Chief Minister is going to happen very soon. Karnataka Deputy CM DK Shivakumar has just met all victorious Telangana MLAs from the Congress Party. The Telangana MLAs have given their opinion on the choice of Chief Minister. Shivakumar is now headed to Delhi to discuss and finalize the name of the next Chief Minister of Telangana with Congress President Malikarjun Karge and Rahul Gandhi. It's very likely to be Revant Reddy, but we will hold off from making that formal news break until it actually happens. Well, that's all the political masala from the wake of these big elections. I'm taking a very quick break on the other side, shifting back to our biggest story, the Chennai floods and inbound cyclone Michong. That's coming up next with Akshita. watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP group company. सालों में देश की सियासत में जो सकारात्मक सुधार लाकर के खड़ा किया है, उससे ये जो परिणाम दिखाई पड़ रहे हैं, वो प्रभावित दिखाई पड़ रहे हैं, क्योंकि नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने इन दस सालों में जो परिक्रमा की पॉलिटिक्स को उसको पछाड़ करके परिश्रम को परिणाम में परिवर्तित करने वाले माहौल को खड़ा किया है और इसमें जनता उन्हीं के साथ है जिन्हों की परिक्रमा की पॉलिटिक्स से दूर परिश्रम और परिणाम को प्राथमिकता देते रहे मैं इतना मानता हूं कि मोदी जी ने इन दस सालों में जो देश की सियासत में सकारात्मक सुधार और सकारात्मक संस्कृति में सुधार और परिवर्तन ला खड़ा किया उसका भारतीय जनता पार्टी का शानदार प्रदर्शन रहा है उसका एक ही कारण है कि नरेंद्र मोदी जी का एक मजबूत नेतृत्व तो भारतीय जनता पार्टी का लोगों के प्रति लोगों के विकास के प्रति लोगों में के सशक्तिकरण के प्रति सशक्त संकल्प Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP group company. Mr. Jyotiraditya Sindhya joining me and this is a team effort from Prime Minister Modi to Jyotiraditya Sindhya ensuring that the victory... The, the credit of this victory goes to Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji who has led from the front, our Home Minister Amit Shah ji, our party president, J.P. Nadda ji, who has directed us, asked us to rise to the occasion. It goes to our chief minister, Shivraj Singh Chauhan ji, whose schemes have resulted in this victory. Our party president, B.D. Sharma ji. But most of all, it goes to every BJP party worker on the ground in Madhya Pradesh. Through your channel, I would like to thank every voter in Madhya Pradesh who has blessed us for the fifth time. And I bow down to them. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
हमने जो मेहनत करनी थी हमने वो मेहनत की है चुन के दोबारा जनता ने हम पे नायत की है हुनर है ये भी मामा का रिश्ता निभाना आता है लाडली बहनों राखी की तुमने हिफाजत की है फूल बरसे हैं हजारों है तजुर्बा हम यारों निकली जो दुआ काम यूं हुआ जीत पे फिदा फिर से कमल घिन जाए तू मैं जो चौहान मेरी जान किस्मत ही खुल जाए कर तू जो मैं काम मेरी जान एमपी फिर मिल जाए क्या बात है मामा फिर से कर दिखा कारनामा म्यूचुअल फंड्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर करें शुरू एल हर पल आपके साथ You're joining us live here on 6 p.m. Prime here on India Today. I'm Akshita Ananda Gopal. I'm here in Hyderabad. And, of course, I will get you all the updates on the aftermath, after results day, what's happening here in Telangana. There's still a question mark on who will be the chief.